there's another one. It's, it's literally every cast. I mean, post-spawn fishing is probably my favorite for crappie. Well, welcome back to another one. Today, I wanted to answer a question I saw in the comment section uh, about this cold front that kind of moved through today. Past three days, we've had actually really warm temps for this time of year. Today is May 26th. And for the past like three or four days, we've had temperatures in the low to upper 80s. And today is like 60, low 60s. And the question was, where do crappie go during this time of year? Generally speaking, they don't change a ton during the springtime. Um, you're not, they're not gonna go out to 20 feet of water or anything like that. On this lake here, I found some crappies still on their beds. They're probably gonna be at least two or three more weeks of crappie that are on their beds. But the first wave of post-spawn fish have pushed out to that weed edge, and that's what I'm fishing for today. Typically, these fish this time of year are very aggressive and they will chase a crankbait. Uh, the weather does have an effect on the bite because this cool front moved in. The bite's kind of not as aggressive as I'd like it to be. I've tried catching, I've caught a couple on crankbaits today, but nothing spectacular. So we're gonna downsize a 16th ounce jig head with a crappie monster uppercut. And a huge thank you to Apex Tackle for sending me for sending me some of these uh, these cool jigs. We've got the little screw-in thing for your plastic. You can screw on your plastic so crappie don't pull your plastic off the jig if you catch a bunch of them. And then we're just running a very, very simple Rod and Bob's fixed bobber setup. And I'm gonna be using the, uh, the top spring, or this top notch here. Lock it in and uh, these fish are suspended over this weed edge or just on the edge of the weeds and so I'm going to set this thing about four feet down. I'll explain some stuff later once we uh, get the fishing. There's a ton of them out there so let's catch them. Yeah, first cast. These fish are super hungry once they get to this stage. And they're pretty much all gonna be females. Most of the males are still stacked up shallow on their beds. Unless I just caught a male. That'd be interesting if I did. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that might be a male. It's got a little bit of black in the belly. Usually these females are pretty much white bellies. There might be some on beds in deeper water here. Just contradicting myself saying that these are mostly females. They are, but some of these males are guarding beds in eight, nine feet of water, and I'm down again right away. There's just so many crappies stacked up on the edge. Now this is a female. It's got the bright white belly. Oh, hold on, let me show you here in a second. So this fish, she's got the bright white belly compared to that other one. That's a female. A lot of these are gonna be females and they're gonna be super hungry. I just got done spawning. They're pushing off this weed edge and they're gonna these fish are gonna be here probably through the mi mid-june be my guess there's gonna be different ways of them there's another one it's it's literally every cast i mean post spawn fishing is probably my favorite for crappie because they're so aggressive and typically you can throw a search bait for them they're super i'm surprised they're not hitting that crankbait this is a decent one that's a decent female right there for this lake anyway Got the white belly and yeah, that's a that's a solid fish. It's, it's literally every, every time that jig just drops down in them, they're just a huge school or stacked up around the edge. And if you don't get a hit, just quick give it a pop like that. And there it goes. Oh, I missed him. That moves the jig and there he is. Yeah, there she is probably. But to answer your question, no, they don't move out super deep. I mean, I'm, I'm in nine feet of water. We just gotta look for that weed edge. On our lakes up north, there's one. Wisconsin, Minnesota, this is pretty typical. And this bite's gonna be, like I said, all the way through the end of, well, probably mid-June. It could be through the end of June if the water temps stay cool enough. 
typically once the water temps get to that 70 plus and hold there, these fish start to move out to that 12 to 15 and even deeper. There's another female, white belly. All right, for spawning crappie, I like to use, this is now my favorite rod to use. I used to use an eight foot, but uh, I feel like that's a lot better for deeper water application, slip bobber application. When you're only fishing, I got the bobber set maybe two and a half feet above my jig, maybe. Um, using this fixed bobber setup, six and a half foot ACC, love it for casting, especially since I'm casting a pretty good distance away from the boat. And then I got the 1000 size Viper X spinning reel from PC Fun. This is, there he is. Oh, I missed him. This is four pound mono. Uh, you probably don't need to go this light. I was fishing a different lake this weekend that I, I needed to switch up and go pretty light on it. But the way these fish are hitting, I'm just so surprised these fish wouldn't hit a crankbait. The way they're just smacking this jig. But this is the bite you can get used to during the post spawn. Find that weed edge We're real close to the spawning bays. I'll get a, a screenshot of the side imaging of what that weed edge looks like on side imaging. And uh, how you can find them here. But a spawning bay is a big flat that's typically in you know one to four feet of water. Easy bud. You can go back. And we're looking for a a gradual drop off, not a super sharp drop off, but a gradual drop off from those spawning flats. And in clearer lakes like this one, visibility is probably about 10 to 12 feet in this lake. Those weeds grow up pretty tall and they grow up quick. So you're probably gonna start looking in that nine to 12 foot range, eight, nine, 10, somewhere in there. On dirtier lakes, you're probably only fishing, you know, five to six feet. Is that, that cause the sun doesn't penetrate through the water column as much and those weeds don't get the, sun, the same sunlight. Photosynthesis doesn't occur as fast. So those weeds are still shallow this time of year. By mid June though, on those muddier lakes or those stained lakes, those crappie are probably pushed off into that eight to 10 foot mark. These clear lakes come mid June, they're gonna be a little bit deeper just because the weed growth advances so much quicker on these clear lakes. Did I not cast far enough? Oh, there he is, yeah. This is, <laughs> it's literally every cast. Every, every cast, there's at least one or two bites. If I miss one, I'll just let that jig fall right back down. And there's enough chop to kind of keep that jig moving with the bobber. I mean, they're literally stacked right, atop, right across this re weed edge. There he is. Yeah. It's too bad these aren't like two pound crappie, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. Fish every cast. Come on, bud. There he is. <laughs> this is a good fighter. Oh, don't get in the trolling motor, dude. Get out of the trolling motor. Every cast. This is the fun time of year to go crappie fishing, in my opinion, especially up north. You guys fish up north, get some nice black crappie for the frying pan. Maybe you luck into a big one. If you want to catch a ton of fish, try out a little deeper on the weed edge. And when you're trying to find them with side imaging, I can't even, I can't even see my bobber. There's one. I felt the bite before I, before I even saw the bobber go down. If you're trying to use them for side imaging, what I'd recommend is when you're, when you find the weed edge, and you're idling down that weed edge, I just go with one side of the side imaging on. And you're either looking for a bunch of bright spots. Um, if they're deep enough, you'll see the bright spots. But if it's, if it's only like five to seven feet of water, you're probably looking for the shadows on top of these weeds. Ooh, just smack the trolling motor there. And those shadows are created from that sonar hitting these fish suspended above the tops of the weeds. And they, they, I mean, these fish are just stacked. There's another decent one. That's a good one. See, occasionally you luck into a decent fish. That's a female. It's probably close to a, probably close to an 11 inch fish, I'd say. We'll measure her in a second here. Throw her in the live well for, for now.
Yeah. Oh man, just smacked it. I mean, it's just non-stop bites. These are non-stop bites. It's crazy this time of year. Mid-May through mid-June. That's a little guy. Just a little guy. But uh, yeah, those shadows are gonna show up in probably seven foot of water or less, depending on how tall the weeds are. And those shadows are created from the sonar hitting the fish and they're probably too high in the water column to show you uh, a bright picture, but you'll see kind of where the sonar, it's like a dead zone on the sonar. And that's what that shadow is, is showing you. This is crazy. This is an insane bite right now. Absolutely insane bite. There's another female. That's a bright white belly right there. Another female post-spawn fish. Yeah, this type of setup I don't like to use a live minnow because you're, I mean, as many bites as we're getting with a plastic, you, uh, <laughs> trying to put on a live minnow after every other fish catch, that's just tiring, so. If you miss the fish, just give it a little pop, let it sit there for a second. Now I got enough chop that bobber's moving up and down with that jig, so it's going to tr help trigger a bite, but if you miss one, just give it a pop. It's going to pull that jig right across the top of the weeds and, oh man, I missed them. And that hopefully it'll trigger a bite just like that. Hopefully they take it better though. There he is. Yeah, there's a fish. I'm really shocked they're as aggressive as they are with this jig, they are not hitting a crankbait right now. Just kind of disappointing because crankbait fishing for crappie is a lot of fun. Especially if you guys that are bass fishermen or walleye fishermen that are used to casting a lot and you don't really want to do the whole vertical jig setup for crappie because it might be a too, too much of a finesse tactic, that crankbait bite can be a lot of fun. All right, well there it is. Super, super simple rig. Even for post-spawn fishing, I was a little disappointed again that crankbait bite isn't that great tonight, but uh, that has to do with the colder weather. But these fish, I mean, the first first post-spawn wave is set up, so get out there, find that weed edge. Um, thanks again to Apex Tackle for sending me the jig. That's the uh, little screw-on jig there. And uh, Crappie Monster, discount code. If you want 20% off these Crappie Monster plastics, use promo code DAVIS, D-A-V-I-S, all caps. Get you 20% off the entire website. So, oh, and then check out the Rod and Bob's half inch. I've used this setup probably now for three videos in a row, I think. I mean, that's what's working. You know, it's a very, very simple setup. It's fixed bobber setup, a little pencil bobber and a small plastic or a hair jig. It's very simple. You don't have to reload minnows and you catch a ton of them, as you can see. I, I've been only fishing 20 minutes. I don't even know how many fish I caught in those 20 minutes, but it was a lot, every single cast. But yeah, these fish are gonna set up on that weed edge now until probably mid-June up north. So get out on the water. Post-spawn fishing is by far my favorite time of year. There are so many tactics you can use. The bite was a little slower day, so I had to use a simple jig and bobber tactic. But once that bite speeds up, I can use something like this. I know all you bass fishermen definitely have a little square bill like this in your tackle box. And uh, you might have to downsize the hooks a little bit. I actually, I got a different one tied on. I downsized the hooks to, I believe they're size 10 treble hooks. I caught a couple, but not nothing great today. Um, but that bite can be a lot of fun. So if you're not into the whole jig and bobber setup, or you really, really like to cast and retrieve some sort of lure, beetle spins, uh, square bills or little crank baits are great. Uh, those micro chatter baits are amazing this time of year. Um, if you can get a warmer, warmer front move in, we're at a cold, cold front right now, but so yeah. Post pond fishing, seven to 12 feet of water. It's gonna go on for the next probably month here. Get on in the water, catch a bunch of crappie, and you keep those ones out, out deep. Those ones up shallow still on those beds, let them do their thing, and then come out deep, catch your limits, fry them up. So, if you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I appreciate you watching as always. We'll see ya.